If you're looking for Ultimate Team Coins, check out FIFACoinsTank.com in the description below and use the code TREY for 5% off your order. Enjoy the video. What's up guys, TV all day here and welcome to the season finale of my full and career mode. This is season number two of course. And uh, we're going to start things off. This is just weird. It just caught my eye. Transfer window slammed shut is in the news and we're in May. That's a little bit interesting. But regardless, we're going to head over to our youth squad because of course we did pass May 1st, which means our overalls and the potentials, uh, mostly the overalls grew of every single player and it's set to what it will be if we were to sign them right now, unless of course we sign them the day of May 1st, which I think we signed this guy on that day, if not he just has a really really crap overall. Uh, but moving down, Victor Santosa, you guys told me to keep him, keep the youth player, and 54-70 to 70 overall is already better than what Camilo Dominguez is, of course our other future star that we're probably going to sell on or maybe just keep sending out on loan until he grows, but 73-94 to 94 potential for him as of right now, at 54-70 to 70 overall, we'll probably sign him when he turns 16. But moving up, we got Torrentry Nilsson, his final overall is 57-61 to 61 with a 72-78 of to 78 potential, he'll probably just be a youth player for us, play some cut games etc etc and uh, he he looks all right not too bad not too great next got Sean Terhorst who looks pretty decent 55 to 69 overall we could sign him right now I'll probably just wait till he asks to get out of the squad but doesn't look too bad Lewis Woodards is the next guy he is gone those that's just horrendous stats horrendous and then Josh Graham who I think I'm gonna give him a chance to stay in the team uh, but he still looks not that great so we'll keep him in there for now but we're going to go look at the calendar. Of course, this is the season finale. We have three games in this episode against Southampton, Swansea, and Sunderland. So hopefully we can get all three wins in those games because as you can see, we only sit three points behind Spurs for the Europa League spot. So it's still a very, very tough ask for us to do that. But I think we can do it. But either way, we're moving on to some player conversations. I am so sick of Ruben Blanco. It's not even funny. I am... He, I'm just getting rid of him next year. He's so annoying. He sent the same thing at least 10 times this season. At least 10 times this season. So I, I, I just can't wait to get rid of him. But either way, like I said, game against Southampton. I will simulate forward. Won't simulate forward. We'll go to the game. And I'll see you guys for the starting 11s. So here is our starting 11. Jack Grealish moves into the starting 11 as, long, as well as Vera 2 and Berahino. Carroll... Uh, Westwood and Redmond all drop. I was really impressed with Berahino in the last game, so I thought I might as well give him the start. I think it was the last game anyway, where he had two assists, one to Saive and one to, uh, what's his face, Entep. And Entep's on 28 goals with three games remaining. Excuse me. So he, you know, can still do very, very well. Score two goals, get 30 this season. That would be ridiculous. But their lineup looks decent, not the greatest. Cody Cropper in goal, which is weird. He's a glitch goalkeeper, of course, American. But let's move on to the game. And Tep goes selfish and he curls it in. I was thinking of crossing it, but it was Antep. I have to get him closer to that 30 goal mark. And he's at 29. We still have the rest of this game to go and two more. Gosh, he's... Oh my goodness, what a goal. Just curls it in. 1-0, boys. And Tep push through and tap he's through taken down in the box he's gonna get his 30th goal of the season on a penalty of course if Cropper doesn't save it but I'm pretty confident he will be able to score on this one of course he's been pretty good this season Pentep to step up to take this one. Oh man gonna place this one top left at least that's where I'm hoping to go and it does two goals he hit 30 on the season in the first game I was expecting it to go down to the wire but Ntep had other ideas 2-0 Ntep over the top Berahino chests it down Berahino taken down in the box once again Southampton just can't cope with our PC offense this, this far into the game and Ntep's gonna get his stat trick in the first half two off of penalties but whatever I don't really care Gardo's taking him down. Wow. I wish you could skip these because I really don't care. And Entep, again, going to go top left. And Cropper guesses the wrong way. Entep getting his third of the game, 3-0 in the first half. Grealish banging it. And he scores! 
52nd minute. What a strike from Jack Grealish. 4-0 the score. And I was not expecting that to go in. I just thought, you know, might as well shoot it. And it's 4-0. Guys, we're going to make some substitutions before we move on to the next. Wow, four shots on target, four, four goals. And they have more possession. That's a little bit intense. So we're going to make some substitutions because we might as well give some youngsters a go considering we are dominating. So Dembele is going to come on. Let's give Burn a chance. Going to take off Hutchinson. And then I think we're going to give Pat Roberts a go for... Don't really want to take off Saive and I don't want to take off Ntep because they're, you know, my best players, I guess you could say. Let's take off Saive, move Ntep over to the left. We'll go with that for now. Let's move on. Here's one last look at the goal. Grealish. Wow. Ntep cutting in. Ntep laying it off. Pat Roberts. Ah, right to Cody Cropper. Full time. 4-0 is the final result. Uh, definitely helps to get the three points against Southampton, who only sit three spots behind us, but let's see how that affects the table. Um, so what is this bullshit? No youth scout report. Are, are, that, has that ever happened to one of you guys? You send out a scout and they don't find anything back? That's really annoying. But also, we have found the Hungarian Gareth Bale. I, I just thought it was kind of funny. He looked... Kind of exactly like him, in my opinion, but whatever. We'll move over to the table. As you can see, we did move up to 7th. Spurs, it looked like they only got a draw out of their last game, so we're only two points behind 4th. Newcastle move up to 5th. This is going to be a tough, tough test. Oh, man, and I believe we do play Swansea. Yeah, we play Swansea, who sit in 12th, and then Sunderland, who play, uh, of course, sit in 17th. So, very, very tough test for us. Let's move on to the game itself. And I'll see you guys for the starting 11s. Um, once again, we get more no youth scout reports, which is dumb. And now that's four of them saying I have no youth scout report when I've only sent out three scouts. That makes no sense. Uh, well, I kind of just skipped through the introductions on accident. But as you can see, we only made one change. That is Westwood in for Vera 2. I have no idea what their starting 11 is, but I guess we'll get a taste of it as we move on. Dyer! Dyer. Walton couldn't save it, and Dyer gets a goal for Swansea. Definitely what we didn't need to push ourselves up the table. 1-0. Oh my goodness. I, For some reason, when I push a button, it doesn't register. You saw it go to him right here. I held down B, and... Ah, oh, so frustrating. 2-0 down. Full time. 2-0 the final score. Very, very difficult game to play against. Their defense was very, very solid throughout this game. And for some reason, I don't know, it just felt really, really wrong. Whenever I tried to pass the ball, my team would just not pass the ball to the right person. It's just one of those frustrating games, you know? But let's move on to the last game of the episode that is against Sunderland. Liam Moore does return from injury, but of course it is the last day of the season, last game of the season, so it doesn't really matter too much. We're not going to be playing him at all because we don't want to risk him getting injured further um, we're going to mix up the starting 11 right now. Westwood is on poor form. So is Roberts. We're going to bring him very two. Let's give Jow a run in his last game, I reckon. Might as well uh, take off Carroll. I think we're going to start him. We're going to put Ntep out there. Saive, Jow. Actually, Jow can go on the right side as well. We'll put, we'll put it like that. I think that's pretty solid. Grealish. Let's just play Redmond as a CM. I really don't care at this point. Um... Yeah, I think that's solid. It's the last game of the season. We might as well change things up a bit. Not too much. Not drastically. Walton is in awful form, but anything is better than Blanco. Holy shit, he's awful. We're going to save the changes to that. And let's take a, one last final look at the table. See if there's any chance. Nope, there is indeed no chance of us getting into the top five, but we can get up to sixth. If you told me before the season we'd be up in contention to hit sixth in the league, that's pretty intense. And right now we sit in 8th, and the lowest we can go is ninth. So that's a pretty fantastic season, if you ask me. Especially when we just came up, the, um, the teams that are dropping. It looks like Sunderland need to get a win and a Cardiff City loss for them to stay up the season. I want to I wanna knock them down. <laughs> Let's get them out of the Premier League. Put them into the championship. QPR and Reading going down as well. Reading came up with us last season. Cardiff came up with us last season as well. And it looks like they have a chance of going down. 
But let's move on to the game and the starting 11s. We already saw our starting 11 before the games, but here is theirs. It looks like they're going to go all out for this game. Of course, they need to get a win. So they're going all out for it. Raphael looks like up there from him. Is he the guy from uh, Motion Gladback? It must be. Gia Carini in there as well. We got this, guys. Adam Johnson getting through, hitting it off the post. And they're through. Raphael tried to trick us, but he can't do it. Walton's too big, too long. He hangs on to that one. He just got a red card. Holy shit. And of course, it's Countermole. Oh, wow. That actually surprised me. I wasn't looking at the screen at that point in time when he dished out the red card. But yeah, that's definitely a red. But we were kind of... I wish they didn't call that because we would have had an advantage there. If we would have gotten an advantage there, we probably would have scored. Saive was pretty, you know, in some pretty open space. See if we can get anything to come from this. Gonna pass this over to Fofana. And... Nope, nothing happens. Oh, are you fucking serious? Tried to pass it off to him. Vera 2 gets injured. That's the most annoying thing about this game. He's not even that tired as well. And that's usually when they pull up with injuries. So, guess Westwood comes in for Vera 2. We're going to take on Barahino for Jao, who just hasn't been cutting it this game. Redmond's going to come off for Grealish. And we're just going to leave it at that. Of course, that's our final substitution. No shots on target. This has been a frustrating game, and now they're parking the bus. When they have to get three points, that does not make sense. And up! No! Pentilamon saves it. It's one of our last real chances of the game. we got to go with the corner technique. Run near post. See if it works. Whipping it over. Barahino went for the spectacular one. And that's full time. Nil-nil the final score. Really should have gotten a goal out of that game. And really, you know, if you look at it, if we would have won that game and moved up to six, depending on who won the Cups, we could have been in Europa League next season. But, of course, we will have to find out now where we sit and where our final position in the table is. We do end in seventh place, just one point behind Spurs, which is kind of frustrating because I believe they just played Cardiff as well, and they got a goal just before Varia 2 got injured. They uh, Soldado scored for Spurs against Cardiff, so that's a bit disappointing. Sunderland goes down. They didn't even try to get three points at the end of that game. QPR and Reading going down as well. Chelsea won the league easily with 85 points. Man City, Arsenal, Newcastle, and Manchester United finish in the top five. Newcastle getting Champions League. That's fantastic to see. And Arsenal not finishing third. That's also surprising to see. But let's move on to see FA Cup. Arsenal indeed won that. So there's one spot. That means Spurs gets in um, as well in the um, Capital One Cup. Chelsea, so that means Swansea gets in, does it not? I'm mistaken. So, Ntep did finish with 31 goals on the season. Aguero with 17 and Gufron with 13. We got 7 million for the Premier League. That's awesome. And Veritu's out for three weeks, but that doesn't matter. And then, sorry, got a lot of interruptions going on. Moving on, let's look at other leagues and where they ended going to the tables. And going on to see who won what. Uh, no, no, wait. I'm in the wrong thing. Um, where, oh, other leagues. There we go. Argentina, don't care about Australia. Austria, Salzburg, Belgium, Standard Liège, out, muscling Anderlecht. Chile, Colo Colo lead in that one. Colombia, Junior FC lead in that one. Denmark, looks like Copenhagen has that one set. We already saw, let's, let's see who's coming up next season. For sure, Wigan and Nottingham Forest going up with Norwich, West Ham, Leicester, and Watford all battling out in the playoff spots. That's interesting to see who's going to win that one. And then Blackpool, Blackpool and Brentford going up from the League 1 and League 2, Shrewsbury and Scunthorpe going up. In France, PSG won the league. Lille, I mean, not Lille, Lyon only finished 7th. That's a bit disappointing. Um, in Germany, Bayern Munich, of course, winning the league. Schalke finishing second. Italy, Juventus winning the league. Um, what's, what else we got? Netherlands, Ajax winning by one point over PSV. Boo, Poland, Portugal, Porto. What else we got? Russia, Zenit winning over Spartak Moscow. Celtic winning Scotland. Spain, Real Madrid 
equal on uh, points with Atletico Madrid, but the goal difference. Wow, that's a massive goal difference. And then, do we got any other important leagues? Turkey, Fenerbahce winning, and yeah, that's about it. So, I'll simulate forward until we hit about July, because um, that's, of course, when the new season starts. If anything happens, I will see you guys for it, but let's move on. So we got a few things back. As you can see, fee due for loan player. We're not going to be signing uh, Zhou Zhao on a permanent deal. Unfortunately, we don't have the money and don't really need him at the moment. We have a bit too many wingers, so we don't need him. Player contracts expiring. Kali Woodrow expiring. So we might as well just tie him down to a long-term contract and maybe sell him on next year because I just don't like playing with Kali Woodrow. I don't know what it is, but he just... I don't know. He doesn't feel like Eisfeld is leaving the club, though, after only two seasons at Fulham. Um, so that's perfectly fine as well. We got a final scouting report on Thomas Callis. Not sure how to pronounce that right, but if I'm not mistaken, doesn't this guy play for Chelsea or something? I, I don't know. Sounds about right, but he's probably one of those people that are on loan and can't go back to them because they have too many players, etc., etc. But he might be one of the players we go for next season. As you can see, 76 overall, 23 years of age. His valuation's pretty low because he is due to be um, gone next January on a free transfer. So I could probably bring him in on a cheap next season and you know, be our starting center back. Probably over, I don't know, over Hutchinson or Pogba. I like them both a lot. So we, we will see about that as well. Going along with that signing type thing. If you guys have any players you want me to sign next season, let me know in the comment section down below. I don't really know where to start with the squad. I think we're strong in a lot of areas. Uh, maybe center back needs to be improved. That's what I'm thinking, but not really sure. Of course, goalkeeper, because Blanco's gone. F him. But you guys will have to let me know. Kali Woodrow is back at the club on a full-term basis. And looking at our youth squad, nothing really changed. Josh Graham looks decent. Shanter Horst is still probably our best player, though. 72 to 88 potential, and Tor Andre Nilsson stayed the same. Victor Santoso, he's our best youth player. What am I talking about? 59 to 73 overall. That's fantastic. All right, the board wishes to inform you that your position with the club is under scrutiny. It's time for your final annual performance review of the season. All righty, let's see how it turns out. I'm going to simulate and talk with you guys while I simulate instead of, you know, uh, doing whatever. Anyway, simulating on, I saw that email, which gets me excited. We're getting on to the last day of the season, stopping simulation, and let's see, player loan has expired, Joe Jow has been sent back, player returning from loan, Eric Palmer Brown, um, Liam Donnelly returns from Portsmouth, and Camilo Dominguez returns from Sheffield United as well. We saw Dembele is happy to stay at the team, so that's fantastic. They didn't say anything about where I go, etc., etc. But um, it looks like I'm staying at the club for another season. Of course, why wouldn't I? I sit seventh in the league. And as well, I can't do a scouting report to end the season because I can't move screens until I end season. So for the first episode of season three, you will be seeing a scouting report to start off with most likely. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this season. Hopefully better things to come next season. My name's T-Real Day, and I'll see you guys for another video later today at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 6 p.m. UK Time for another episode of my Olympic League in Acre Mode. My name's T-Real Day, and I'm out.